Hello, dear viewer, and welcome back to the Lunar Nebula Art Channel with me, Jalanon. Today, we're doing the mega form of the Kaimon line. So, Beckmon. So, with this one, I had a pretty good idea of the kind of thing I wanted to draw, kind of Egyptian pharaoh style crocodile, based on the Egyptian deity, Sobek. And, you know, I, I kind of had a little bit of trouble with the pose, not gonna lie. But I think it turned out pretty well. I kind of balanced the tail's curve with the curve of the Kopesh, which is kind of like a sword axe that ancient Egyptians used. Kind of more often it was made of bronze, and once again it was more made for slashing than for stabbing, if you can't tell by the angle of the blade. For more information on the Kopesh, you may enjoy checking out Skalagrim's channel. Just a heads up, uh, he sometimes has some foul language, and so on and so forth. But yeah, other good channels for swords and things would be like Scala Gladiatoria, Shadiversity, and I think Lindy Beige? And of course the History Channel has specials every now and then. According to the internet, uh, the Kopesh became popular kind of around 1570 BC to about 1070 BC. That's the New Kingdom era, at least according to historicaleve.com. Their power came more from their weight than from their actual cutting edge, apparently. And yeah, yeah, this one would probably be quite a bit larger than a normal Kopesh, which was usually more of a one-handed bladed affair. And originally, I had tried to make it so that the handle could be used with two hands, but with Digimon, you gotta remember, they like their giant hands and feet. And it, you might be able to tell, but uh, I was trying to do a little bit more with that. I was focused more on kind of identifying with the design on Leomon and Ward Raymon. Leomon with the hands and musculature and all that, and Ward Raymon with the feet with the three-toed claws. I bought some ragged shorts with kind of that Egyptian tunic waist covering might be kind of interesting uh, to kind of showcase that Sobekmon is more of a willing to get in the mud, rough and tumble kind of Digimon, and yet still trying to be a dignified warrior. I'm not sure I'm completely happy with the way the kind of rough edges of the frayed shorts came out, but you know what, sometimes you just gotta keep going in order to meet a deadline. It might be kind of hard to see with the sketch outline still there, but uh, one thing I didn't have sketched before was the onk, right? The symbol of life and all that. Uh, it kind of caught me when I was looking at a costume of a pharaoh for reference that, you know, that might break up some of the space on the chest in an interesting way and continue that kind of golden motif of color for accessories. So I added it in. And I do end up changing that later, but I still think it's an interesting idea. Here we can see I'm starting to get into the Nimi's headdress and the snout of the crocodile. And eventually, I will realize that the crocodile has a more triangular snout. For now, well, we're gonna ignore that and try to put stripes on this Nimi's headdress. Now, the normal Nimi's headdress, hopefully I'm saying this somewhat correctly, normally has blue and gold stripes. With Sobekmon, I didn't think blue would necessarily work well with the color scheme, and we already had kind of a gold motif, so I went with that and ran with it. Yep. And I think it worked out okay. But because of how the headdress can kind of flow around the head and over the shoulders, I tried to put in some shadows there to kind of showcase that these flaps on the side are moving a little bit, but they're also kind of folded inward. And hopefully that is communicated well. Thankfully, since this is a fictional character entirely, I can really play around with colors. And I do want to do more color theory in the future. Uh, just practice and getting used to it for myself. But yeah, I, I think green, gold, black, brown, they seem to work decently well together. Because uh, gold, I guess you could say, is just a gradient where yellow could just be a light brown etc etc 
Here is where I kind of finally settle in on a design for the back left arm and how I want to position this. So the Kopesh was large enough that it took me a while to realize exactly what I wanted to do with that back arm because I didn't want it to detract from the overall flow of the composition and I wanted it to enhance it if possible. So I think I settled on that and I really like what I did with this design on the Kopesh here. I mirror the diamonds on the tail into these kind of golden gem diamonds on the Kopesh. And then uh, to break up the black blade, I use a line of yellow slash gold. And I think that works pretty well. I was struggling with how large I should make this line since it didn't quite feel right at first. I also want to mention that there was a Google image of a black Kopesh which was a very good inspiration for this and the color design of the Kopesh. So I did want to shout that out. Uh, Google Images is your friend. It's your friend. Try to take some inspiration from it when you can and help yourself out. On a side note, this is not a direct copy of that Kopesh seen on the internet uh, in a number of ways. And I just used it as reference for making my own more fantastical and less realistic Kopesh but I think it matches Sobekmon pretty well. And he's a digital monster, so reality can just kind of lay off a little bit on Sobekmon. In the meantime, I am coloring this back arm. So what I've been trying to do with Sobekmon and Denomon was uh, basically do the line work, and then once I had the line work, figure out the colors underneath the lines, it, when that made sense. Like, the back leg is actually just its own shape with the stroke being the lines. And that worked pretty well in Affinity Designer 2. And there are times though, like with this back arm, where you want your line work to be more complex, but that just doesn't quite work out. Thankfully, I am able to do some things with gradients and shapes and all that, and I can pull the teeth designs I took from Denomon and just adjust those as desired which works out pretty well here, I think. But yeah, it does take some more finagling and finesse to make those teeth look like they are popping out from under the lips rather than on top of the lips. So you've really got to match those. And oh, I also do add a gradient to the diamonds on the tail, which I think works out okay. And then I just do an outline, a layer effect outline on the diamonds on the tail to save some time from having to select each one individually and doing strokes on them and stuff, that's kind of a nice shortcut. And popping up very quickly are the stripes that I used on Crocomon. I had meant to use these on Denomon, and I didn't, uh, but I realized, yeah, yeah, I'd like those as well on Sobekmon and just a little bit more complexity to things. And then I also realized, because I have them as a multiply layer function, that I can duplicate them and kind of make an even darker stripe later on. So that's what I end up doing, and that's also what I end up doing to the Ankh, is completely changing that into just a pattern on its scaly skin. So Sobekmon now has almost a tattoo, maybe? I don't, I don't remember the ancient Egyptians really having tattoos. They did, I want to say, have inks, like for their eye makeup and everything, but I don't know if they did full-on tattooing. So, I decided to Google that and find on worldhistory.org that apparently uh, tattoos were practiced in ancient Egypt at least as early as the Middle Kingdom, 2040 to 1782 BC, and so on and so forth. So hey, hey, hopefully you all learned something too. <laughs> Overall, I'm pretty happy with how Subicmon came out. There's a lot of little details I like to do, like more shading on the hat, the Nemi's headdress, and on the body and just trying to define more areas like I did on the front arm. And of course, I realized after the fact that I didn't get all the highlights done either. The sword, yeah, yeah, it looks good. And yeah, I wish I could have put more time and energy into it. But uh, sadly, sometimes you gotta listen to your body and when your wrists are telling you, oh hey, Doing more drawing might be a bad idea. You should probably listen. If you liked this episode of Lunar Nebula, don't forget to like, 
comment, share, and subscribe, and have a great day, dear viewer.